Hello everybody, my name is Code Blue and welcome back to another Code Blue tutorial. Now in this video we're going to be uh, sorting out um, basically the lobby starting and stopping. Some of you may have noticed already though, I do have my mixer now, so the audio should be a lot better than before. Um, I also want to add that even though this was initially intended to be multiplayer, um, due to some complex things that I kind of am going to struggle to teach you, we're going to make this single player only. Um, so it's still going to run on the server, but it's designed for only one player. Um, and obviously we'll break if you have more. Um, but anyway, let's get started. So in this video, as I just said, we're going to be um, creating a lobby um, to kind of, uh, when you press start, the game will begin. Um, or maybe even, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, we'll just do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our game mode folder here. Um, for those of you who don't know how to get a folder like this, um, all you got to do is have a folder and you could just simply drag and drop it on Sublime and that will go ahead and that will open the folder in Sublime. Um, but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and um, we'll create a folder in here, a new folder, and we'll call this folder, uh, what can we call it? We'll call it uh, lobby underscore manager. Um, and of course inside here we'll create a new file. We'll save this as um, cl underscore lobby dot lua. Then we'll create another new one and we'll call this sv underscore lobby dot lua. Um, and as we did with the round controller, we're going to need to go into the init. We need to go to here. We need to add cs lua file. We need to add the lobby, whoops, lobby underscore manager slash cl underscore lobby dot lua and then we also need to include um i'll just copy and paste this here we also need to include the server side on the server of course um so now that we've done this um we need to go into the client side and we need to include it in here whoops just like that and there we go so this is going to go ahead and cause our scripts to be active um now what we'll do is in the sv underscore lobby we'll um util dot add network string whoops all right um add network string okay now what this string is going to do this string is basically going to prompt the client to open up the lobby so we'll just call this um open lobby okay uh then what we'll do, we'll do is we'll create two functions uh function enter lobby We'll create another one, um, and we'll call it. Uh, hmm. Actually, we'll just use enter lobby for now. Um, so what we're gonna do is in here, we'll go ahead and we'll say net dot start, and we'll go ahead and we'll start open underscore lobby, and then we'll do net dot uh, send. Uh, we'll do broadcast. The reason why we use broadcast is even though there's only one player on the server. Um, we'll just broadcast it to everybody. Um, so that's obviously going to be our player. So whenever we call this function, it's going to go ahead and send a network message to our client. It's not going to contain any data. It's just going to simply send that message. So now if we go on to um, the client side of the lobby, we can go ahead and do net.receive. And we can receive that um, open lobby message, right? Um, yep, that's what it was called. Um, so when we go ahead and we do this, we'll go ahead and we'll supply a function here. Um, we don't need any parameters for the function. Um, but what we will do here then is we'll have a function under here called um, open lobby. Okay. Now this function is going to contain a uh, derma code. So this derma is basically going to be the visual aspect of the lobby. So we'll just call this frame. We'll set it equal to vgui.create dframe. Get rid of this. Um, also, for those of you who are wondering um, how it's auto-completing like that, if you begin typing and before you finish, you hit enter, it will go ahead and put the parameters there too because um, I've had some questions about that. What we'll do is we'll do frame set size and we'll set its size to the screen width and the screen height. So that's going to fill our entire screen up. Then what we're going to do is we're going to call center. as uh, That's going to go ahead and... Let me just go ahead and leave TeamSpeak a minute. Uh, 
Okay, so sorry about the little jump cut there. Right, so we've went ahead and we've centered the frame now on our screen. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do set visible. Whoops, set visible to true. Um, so now that's gone ahead and set it visible on our screen. Um, we're gonna actually do the paint function now. So we'll do frame dot paint. Um, whoops, is equal to a function s width height. Um, the reason why I do those parameters is because the S is self, basically the, the panel that's being painted, W being the width, H being the height. Um, here, I'm just gonna go ahead and do draw dot rounded box. And this is gonna look ugly. Um, obviously, I'm not doing this to look pretty. If you want this to look nice, that's your job. But we're gonna do it at zero, 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 and then we're gonna do the width, height, and then we're gonna do the color of zero, 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 two, five, five. Okay, so that's gonna be pure black now. Um, we're gonna do one more thing as well. Uh, with the frame is we're gonna do frame uh, Show close button and we're gonna set that to false so we don't have a close button. We're also gonna do frame Set draggable to false so the the window cannot be dragged around the screen. And we're also gonna do frame set title Whoops not time set title and we're gonna set its title to um, Nothing so the title will not show up um, and once we've done that, we can go ahead and we can do frame make pop up, just like that. Then what we'll do is we'll create one more. We'll call it a uh, start button and we'll set it equal to vgui.create. We'll create a D button. Um, I know this is kind of repetitive for some of you, but now that we've done that, all we've got to do is set its parent to frame. Then we've got to do start button. Is that what it was called? Yeah. Uh, we'll set its size. Um, this is going to look weird at first, obviously you can reskin it, but we'll set its size to be, um, 200 by 75. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to say stop, but, um, set position and we're going to set its position, um, to half of the box, um, which we already know that the box is the screen width. So we can just do that. We'll divide it by two. Um, and then we're going to do screen height divided by two, but this isn't going to be perfectly in the center. This is going to be slightly off. Um, so what we need to do, whoops, is we need to minus half of this. So we'll go ahead and we'll minus 100 and minus half of this. So we'll go ahead and minus 75 divided by two. Um, I don't know what 75 divided by two is, um, which is why I just did it like that. Uh, if you know the number, you can put it in there. But basically, um, imagine that we set it to the center of this window. This is where the corner of the button is. So then it's going to draw around this area. But by minus in half of it, we offset it to the center. That may not make a lot of sense, so I'll quickly go ahead and open up Photoshop here. Um, as long as it doesn't crash. Oh, it did crash. It has a habit of doing that now. No idea why. Um, there we go. So let's say that this is the center of our screen here. Um, when we draw the button, the button is going to go like this. So what we do is we minus half of the width and half of the height, which is basically just like, oops, I guess I can't do that. It's basically just like moving it like that. So it's then in the center. So <laughs> I hope that made sense to you. Um, but what we'll do now is instead of hooking this function up to here, we'll actually just call the open lobby function directly like that. So then that's going to cause our lobby to open. So we'll go ahead, we'll jump in the game mode. Oh, nope, that's not going to work yet. We've got to do one more thing. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go into the server side. We're going to add a hook, hook dot add player initial spawn. I feel like I didn't spell that right. I go ahead and try that again. Player initial spawn. Fuck it. We'll go with it. Oops. Sorry about my language. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll just say, um, open, whoops, player Lobby, that name doesn't really matter. And what we'll do is we'll call the enter lobby function, okay? So whenever any player initially spawns, whoops, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna call the enter lobby function, which is gonna broadcast a message to our client and our client will go ahead and open this lobby. Now, some of you might be saying, why don't we just make the frame open up automatically on the client? Well, this is because when you die, we're gonna want to reopen the player's lobby, which is why we use the net message for it. But let's go ahead and um, make sure everything is all, whoops, everything is all saved. Like that, there we go. So now if we go ahead and we start a new game, we should be presented with our amazingly beautiful derma.
Okay, so now that we're in here, um, as you can see, our our little pop-up didn't actually display. So let's go ahead and um, scroll through here and see if we got any errors. Okay, so sorry about the little jump there. That was a, a really big mistake on my part. Some of you may have noticed it. Um, what I was trying to do is I was trying to assign the function open lobby to the net.receive function before I had actually created the function. So all I'm going to do is just copy that function and move it under there. So it's going to go ahead and set it to open lobby after this is um, after this is set. So I really apologize um, about that. But let's go ahead and uh, cool little tip. If you're in single player, if you type reload, it will just instantly restart the server for you. Um, so now if we go ahead and um, as you can see, we get a black window with a button. And when we click the button, nothing happens. Um, now our character is still in game. All we've done is just draw a big box over it. Uh, but as you can see, there is no close button here and I cannot drag this window around and there is no title here either. Um, so what we'll do now is uh, the obvious. We'll do start but set text. And we'll just set the text to uh, start game. Okay. Now remember, this is no... This is no fancy, um, no fancy game mode that looks super pretty and hot. It just, oh, nice message. It just does what it needs to do. So um, when we press start game there, nothing happens. So that's our next goal. Uh, all we're going to do is on the client, um, we're going to add one more up here. Uh, one more network string, that is. Oops. I spelled that right, didn't I? Yes, I did. Add network string. Now, I also want to apologize if I'm not very good at explaining this right now. Um, because obviously I'm writing it on the spot as well, and I'm thinking of the easiest way to do it for you guys. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll just do start underscore game, okay? Then we'll do a net.receive here called uh, start underscore game. And in the function here, we'll just put the function in here. Now, we don't need any parameters because remember, this is intended for only single player. And a lot of you get confused about why we do networking in single player. Uh, let me explain that when you're in single player, there is still a client and a server. Um, it's just you represent both. So you're the client and the server. But if you want to communicate between each end, um, you still have to use like net messages. For example, the client still can't perform actions that are limited to the server only. So remember, if you're only making a single player game mode, you still need to do networking in it. That's just part of Gary's mod. Um, but anyway, so now that we've gone ahead and we've done this, what we are going to do is we're going to go into our round controller, the server side, because this is server side code. And as you can see, we have these functions that we made in the previous tutorial. What we're going to do is we're going to call begin round. So if we go back into our server, um, what we'll do is we'll call begin round whenever start game is received. Okay. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll go onto the client and we'll do start but dot do click. Um, is equal to function. Now this is the function that gets called whenever this is the function that gets called whenever a user clicks on the button. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do oops, net dot start. We're going to start up that network message and we'll just do send whoops, send to server. It's going to send that message to the server. Um, so now that we've gone ahead and we've done that, um, what there's one more thing that we're going to want to do before we send the message. Uh, actually, no, we'll do this after we send the message. We're going to want to go ahead and get our frame up here. And we're going to want to call close on it. Um, if we don't call close, then the frame is going to, of course, be stuck there. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll do reload. Um, and once it loads up, there we go. So we have our start game button. When we click on the button, as you can see, the window closes. Um, supposedly, nothing happens. But of course, if we do our Lua underscore run, underscore CL, um, get round status, I believe it was called. Um, apparently not. Uh, let me go ahead and quickly check what that is. OK, it is get round status. Oh, nope, that should have worked. Um, oh, of course, same mistake as last time. SV underscore allow CS Lua. One, so allow us to run client side Lua, and we'll run that. And as you can see, that still didn't work. Um, GG. Um, so I'll do SV cheats one, then that, and then that. And that's still not working. Oh, what am I on about? 
Um, we're supposed to be printing out the value from that. Big mistake on my part. Um, and as you can see, the value printed is one, which means the round has begun and our client received the update. Now, that may not have been um, that entertaining as usual, but now we have our lobby. So then in the next video, what we can do is when the user clicks that start button, we can go ahead and we can spawn the player and we could give the player their starting weapon um, and stuff like that. So uh, I hope you learned something. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, if you want, check out my TeamSpeak. The IP should be in the description. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.